couple announcements real quick um it's pretty much pretty much the same announcements right now uh you can get cds for three dollars so if you miss a sermon or a or a day or you want to go back and re-listen to something you can put in a request for a cd the cds are three dollars and this also counts for Wednesday nights. So if you, if you, even if you want to get a Wednesday night CD, you can do that. Just sign up for it. One thing that I really want to touch on real quick is this. If you have small children, um, it's, it's really a safety measurement for the church that you don't let your kids play on the, the playground equipment when there's, not, when there's no supervision out there. Okay, it's just, it's really very very important. We need we need uh, supervision on the playground when the kids are out there. And if your kids are older than seven, they're not on the they're not allowed in the playground area itself. So they can go out and play basketball, but not the actual playground equipment. Also, uh, one thing that we I really want to touch on. Um, I would like for you to keep your kids out of the parking lot. It's very, very important that you keep your kids out of the parking lot because people pull in, they back up, they're not watching for small children in the parking lot. And when your kids are out running in the parking lot, we really don't want any of them getting hit. We believe in healing and laying on hands, but we don't want to have to. <laughs> Amen? So, it is Sunday morning. It is now three after 10. I don't know about you guys, I know at 9 o'clock we have adult Bible classes on Sunday morning. We have kids' classes at whatever time we release out of here. We have Wednesday nights. But right now, it's time to get up on our feet. It's time to raise your hands, clap your hands, stomp your feet. Now let's praise the Lord.
sound of a river coming, it's coming down. Oh, I can hear the sound of the river coming down. I can hear the sound of the river coming down. I can hear the sound. I can hear the sound.
ground Listen to the sound, listen to the sound Listen to the sound, listen to the sound Clap your hands! Listen to the sound, listen to the sound Listen to the sound, listen to the sound Come on, there's power right there! Listen to the sound, listen to the sound Oh, it's a roar! You hear a roar! Listen to the sound, listen to the sound
make sure everybody hears this. I want you to hear what I'm going to say to you. The only difference that you're going to notice today, and I want you to hear this, is how you see God. How do you see this Jesus that we came here today for? There'll be some that see Jesus in a way that when the man of God told the servant, he said, go and look and see if the rain is coming. The one he sent didn't know God the way the man of God knows him. And he went and he come back, he said, I don't see anything. There'll be some that'll sit in this church today and they won't see anything. There are some in here that may be a little further ahead and he came back with that thing and he said, I don't see anything. He said, go again. Because what I'm telling you today is not based on what you may see or what you may know is based on what the Word of God says. The Word of God said, go look again. And he still didn't see anything. And seven times he sent him. And he finally seen what the man of God seen the first time. The first time the man of God seen the rain coming. And the seventh time the man came back and he said, I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. Right after that, boy, the rains came. And I mean, they came hard. The word of God today is so available to you. You've been lied to. You've been misled. You've been pulled different directions. But I'm telling you that hidden inside a relationship with Jesus Christ is power and authority. God says, I never called you here to, for you to be burdened down and broken. That's not my plan. My plan is that you would be the head and not the tail. That you would be above and not beneath. That's the word of God. That's not what I say. That's the word of God. The word of God says, they'll know me by your love for each other. What? <clears throat> Do you know this Jesus? Because he's the key. He's, he's the power that plugs you into everything. This church may be a little loud, but I still think we're way quieter than the million people that was singing and yelling when they marched out of Egypt. I think we're still just a little bit quieter than the ones that marched around the Jericho wall. And on that seventh day they told them on that seventh day I want you to yell and when they forgot about all their pride and all their arrogance when they forgot about all this social network business and they just did what God told them to do they seen the one opposition the one thing that was keeping them out they seen it fall as if it was nothing the enemy has brought opposition to you. He's held you up in different areas of your life. And I'm not telling you, uh, just stand up and shout out. That was what God told them to do. But I'm telling you, listen to God's voice and move in the direction God tells you to move. Hear him, listen to him, and move when he says move.
I hear the sounds of the river coming down. I hear the sounds of the anointing of God coming down in a lost and dying world who has managed to turn their mind, their eyes, and their back on Christianity, religion, and parenting. They need us to love them. They need us to come to them. But when you get there, I need you to know Jesus. <laughs> I need you to know who he is. I don't need you to know a doctrine. I don't need you to know what somebody else says. I need you to know this Jesus. I need you to have a relationship with him, not just some kind of knowledge that everybody else says, oh yeah, I know Jesus, he's a good guy. No, he's more than that. I need you to know that blood cleansing, that soul saving son of God. Men and women, I feel such an urgency to empower you to go out of this place and win the lost. We're not winning them by judgment. We're not winning them by telling them how bad they are. We need to win them by telling them how good Jesus is. They're waiting for in here right now has somebody in mind that they need to go witness to. We need to take that love with us and witness, be a witness, and take the power of God with us. Heal them right there where they are. Give them forgiveness right there. coming back. Our king is coming back for his church. He's not coming back for a broke down old bride. He's not coming back for the one that took his word and hid it. He's coming back for the one that took his word and multiplied it and multiplied it and multiplied it. So today, can I just ask you one time? <clears throat> can I just ask you one time? Just empty out everything in your mind and just say that there's a reason why I'm here. I don't care if you've been coming here for 20 years. There's a reason why you're here today. And I want you to just ask Him. God, without any doubt, Show me my purpose. God, send me. Use me. And then trust Him to do it. Amen. Can we trust God today? Can we trust Him with our answer? I want you to block out whatever's going on around you. There may be some that like to stand and shout, some that like to sit and meditate, some that feel the need to, to run, some that need to feel the need to lay out. I don't care what you feel. I just want to know you're listening. That small, still voice inside. The Spirit of God talking to your spirit. It'll change your life. I promise you that. It will change your life forever. It changed David's life so much that any time that he fell away from or he felt that he had fell away from God, the first thing that he would ask for is that, God, please don't take your spirit from me. That intimate relationship, that knowing that God was walking with him step by step. 
put everything out of your mind. I know we got problems. I know there's difficulties. There's health problems. Just put it all out for a moment and say, God, I just want to spend the next few minutes just with you. Just with you. I got some questions. I feel like I'm failing in some places that I don't feel like I should be. Holy Spirit, come. Overtake me. Fill me. Overflow it with your presence. I need to hear your voice today. Can we do that just for a few moments? Take me past the outer courts Into the holy place Past the brazen altar Lord, I want to see your face Take me by the crowds of people Past the priests to sing their praise I hunger and thirst for your righteousness And it's only found one place Take me into the holy of holies Take me in by the blood of the Lamb Take me into the holy of holies Take it close
ਆਏ
let your voices ring out. Holy. You don't need these instruments to praise. You are holy. Oh, let your voice ring out. You are holy. Oh, you are holy. You are holy. holy. He is our King. Just so much more. God is just so much more than what we believe. God is just so much more than what we will allow a lot of times. But men and women of God, I got to tell you something. Sitting right here beside me today is a true miracle of God. She was in a terrible accident when they found her and life flighted her. An hour later, they found out that her aorta had been torn completely away from her heart. The doctors themselves tell us that over 90% of the people that this happened to die immediately and certainly not an hour later. But God's blood God's hand of healing sustained her and held her until they could get her into the operating room over an hour later. Then a report come that she would have to lose her leg. And every report that kept coming was more damage and more damage and more damage was not even sure that she should live. But her children started coming to this church. And her children started learning that we don't go along with those kind of confessions. Amen. We don't believe everything doctors tell us. We don't believe everything people tell us. But God says, in our tongue is the power of life and death. And we begin speaking life over her life over her she'll live and not die she will walk she'll not lose her leg and for her to be sitting right here beside me today is an absolute undeniable miracle from god that all we have to do is believe and confess what god confesses a doctor is not the final word. He didn't create you. God created you. And God says, I've seen all your days before you lived your first one. I'll be the one to decide whether or not that doctor's confession is right or wrong. And for Patty, his confession was wrong. They restored it, and her heart is just fine. Her leg is still here. I watched her walk through the house the other day on a walker. I just got to ask one more time. What Jesus is it that you know? We know a healing Jesus, don't we? What Jesus is it that you're going to start praying to? An idol made of wood can't do this. A religion can't do this. This is a relationship. It's a relationship with her son and, and the kids. such a burden today to, to get across to you the difference between religion and relationship.
confession and passivity. God, you're so good. God's so good. Help us today, Lord. God, everything you've done in this worship service already, place the seal of the Holy Spirit on it. We plead your blood over those who need healing in their bodies, in their spirit, their soul, their mind. We pray over that right now, God, in Jesus' name. My confession today is, Lord, let every man be a liar, but God, let your word be true. In Jesus' name. And if you love him, believe him, and want to get closer to him, can I hear you say amen? Amen. give God some praise today. Amen. Lord, it is good to be in the house of the Lord. Father, we came in to praise you today. You know, I say that every Sunday, but really we don't need to come in here to praise him. (laughs) We really should be waking up praising him and going to bed praising him and praising him throughout the day. You know, so, well, I had my tithe scripture up on my computer, but it won't pull up. So (laughs) anyway, here's your tithe message today. Give and it shall be given. Pressed down, shaken together, running over shall man give unto your bosom. I want to tell you, I want to thank everybody for supporting, supporting my trip to Israel. I really do. I I just want to thank all of you for just your prayers and your givings and, and everything. And I know that when, when God says that you give, and when you do it, God is so faithful just to give back. And I know that, that he is just pouring out blessings upon me, so I know he's pouring out blessings upon every single one of you. You know, I know I read a scripture last week, and it said that people were begging the ministers of God to, to just take their money. Because they knew that when the, when the ministers would take their money that God would would bless them and that they would be part of that ministry. So, I mean, it's so important that, you know, I had a young man come by yesterday and he bought something, but then he turned around and he came back because he knew that I was going to Israel. And, you know, I looked at him and I said, you know, you have a part of that mission, of, of that mission to go to Israel. And he's like, you know, that's awesome. You know, because people don't really, really realize that when I'm going, I'm not going just to tour Israel. I'm going to, to really learn and get something out of it, you know, so that I can come back and, and use it for God's glory. It's not just a tour for me. You know, it's something that, that is very vitally important to my spirit. So I just want to encourage you to, to give into ministries. You know, New Beginnings is an awesome ministry. You know, it just is. The things that we do behind the scenes are, are amazing. So. I just want to encourage you to, to continue to tithe and continue to, to give and, and just know, and just like Pastor was saying, know and confess that, that God is blessing your household. And Father, we thank you right now for many, many blessings upon the, the homes that are represented in this place. And Father, I thank you that when we put you first, that Father, you are so faithful to lift us up and just supply everything that we need and the things that we also want, Father, according to your will, in Jesus' name, amen.
Ooh, I'm tired. <laughs> Now let's have some church. I'm ready for a little church. Amen. Before I get started, gentlemen, I need your help. On the uh, what day? The 25th, which I guess is next Saturday. Two Saturdays. Not not this Sunday coming up, but the next one. Uh, we want to try to get together about nine o'clock on that Saturday morning before it starts getting hot. And I would imagine within about a couple of hours, we want to, we just bought a brand new play. Uh, I don't even know what to call it. It ain't no swing set, that's for sure. More like a playground, clubhouse, play set. Yeah. When we, when we were looking at the pictures of it, I thought, oh, that'd be great. I, I didn't have the prophetic vision to see a big pile of wood sitting on the parking lot. So we need to get it put together. We got the gravel in, we got the playground all built and ready to go, but it's just sitting out there and sitting out there. So if you would, on the 25th, let's get together about nine o'clock that Saturday morning, get it all built and put together and be men around a construction site. Because that's what we do. <laughs> so let's just get together and get it built and then we'll finally be done with it and move on to the next project which is next project I'm happy he's doing all that one by itself he must not be in here I'd have heard about that but I just want to get it done so if you can I'll remind you again next Sunday but uh, Saturday the 25th try to make arrangements for it amen this is another one of them Sundays. I got about four different sermons that I would love to do any one of the four and have no idea which one we're going to do. God, God is just so impressing on me. Are you guys happy to see Patty here this Sunday morning? Yeah. Hallelujah. Been praying and praying and believing God and now finally she was able to leave the house and come to church. It's been a, a crazy, amazing journey. And when we get to the end of it, you can bet I'm gonna have her come up and share. And because uh, there's, there's so much more that's went on than, than what I need to tell you about, but it's gonna be a testimony that just uh, sets the world on fire. So when, it, when we get closer to the end, just be looking for that to come. Uh, I so appreciate Joe and Babs and, and everybody that came in and helped over the last few days on this whole garage sale day. Uh, it really did help with Pastor Dawn. And uh, I'm so thankful for everybody that came and visited and all that thing. Is there anything else I'm supposed to? Okay. <laughs> now I'm ready to go to work. I was on my way this morning and I, everything was coming at me and coming at me. I said, oh, that'd be great. Nope, that's not it. Oh, that'd be great. No, that's not it. I started looking at, he, God just made, uh, brought me to where just, just look at everything that I've said, everything that I've done, everything that we've preached and taught here over the last few years. I said, man, it's been so good. We've learned so much and we've, we begin to come closer to knowing you in such a personal way. And he said, stop right there. I thought, oh, Lord, that's not really where I wanted to get stopped at. He said, Lord, I, I, said, Lord, I, I feel like we have. We, we've come to where we know you in a, in a more deep, uh, deeper and more personal way. He said, no, no. He said, that's what I need to do now, I, I need my people to know me. We've been talking about identity. And it's time that we know who we are in the Lord and it's time we know who we are in Jesus and in Christ and all this stuff. And he said, that's gonna be hard for you to do until you're absolutely sure that you know who I am. 
Because you can't know who I am in you until you know who I am. And I kind of backed away from that. I thought, oh my God. Whew. And here's, what, here, here's kind of what I want to say about it. You can, you can ask Christians, if you had a street ministry or if you were just doing street interviews, are you a Christian? So many would say yes that have no idea what you're even asking them. It's just a, such a broad term of Christian that it means so many different things to so many people. You can ask uh, other religions, what do you think about Jesus? Oh, I like him. I think he was a good person. Well, that's respectful, but you don't know him. All these other different things start coming in. And really, instead of going down that whole road, what if you went down it like this? It's one thing for you to like him. But what you're called is to be like him. You can like him and not be a Christian. Is this too deep for Sunday morning? Is this should be like a Wednesday night study? We're not called to like him. We're called to be like him. Because the very name that you're gonna claim, yes, I'm a Christian, that means, yes, I am Christ-like. The very name pretty well details and tells you exactly what it is I'm talking about. I don't leave a whole lot to the imagination. When I claim you as one of mine, then I'm claiming that you are like me, like I am like my father. Is this, is this okay? So when we start to struggle with identity, it's not necessarily our identity, it's that we got sidetracked from the beginning because we don't know him. I don't know him in this way. So I have to, I have to start backtracking a little bit and said, okay, now I know the physical parts and I've got a real good understanding of my identity that I am supposed to look like somebody. And I'm supposed to claim all of this uh, Bible, all of this word, all these textual uh, things that I've, I've been going through. I'm supposed to have all that. But I don't know really from whence it came. I don't know who it is I'm supposed to really be following and who I'm supposed to be claiming that I'm just like them. I was, I don't want to embarrass you, but I was thinking about Kylie. I know her family. I, I've, I've known her family for a long time, way before she was even born. But it amazes me how they favor each other all the way down. I mean, there is some strong DNA on mom's side because all the girls from their moms, their aunts, grandma, you don't have to guess at this. I don't know what your last name is, but I know you're related to. So when I, when I look at her, I don't have to try to guess who her mom and who her parents are because she favors them, she looks like them. There's no denying it. I don't have to ask whether or not her mom is Kelly, but it's so, the family is so close that it could be Connie, it could be Kelly, it could, because Kim, I mean, it, it could be any of these people because they favor each other so much. Now, shouldn't that be this church Shouldn't we be so closely uh, following the same person that we look like the same person, we talk like the same person, we act 
like the same person and that same person should only, I feel like I'm talking in a, a Coliseum <laughs> or the Grand Canyon. Hello? <laughs> but when, let me, let me say this, when, when man gets involved in it and he wants to try to make it fit a little different over here, that's when we begin to see the division and the, the breakup of no longer following Christ. Now we're following what this person thinks it should look like. Well, then what if somebody breaks off from that one? Well, now we have a break off from a break off and now we're divided in another division. So now here we are 2,000 years down the road from when Christ come to establish the church and we are, I mean, it's, there's been some breakups. <laughs> there's been some church splits. There's been all this go on and all this is happening and now we have this mantle that we need to begin to try to go back to the source. Now we have to try to find out what is true, what is Christ, what is man. We have to divide all that out because the common sense tells us that if we look at today, based on the example that was set 2,000 years ago, are we seeing the same results? Okay? So if we're not seeing the same results, then we're not following the same example. So what do we need to do? We don't continue to do it wrong. We go back and we start to find who started it, how did he do it, and go that direction with it. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, right now, the, the big de church debate is law versus grace. Law versus grace. All right. Just the fact that we're still debating it is a problem. This shouldn't still be a problem. It shouldn't be something that we're still debating. So I want to just show you something real quick right down from the very beginning that just because you need to check yourself sometimes that does not mean that you are against grace. Okay? So I want to show you something. Here's my life in a nutshell. <laughs> Proverbs 24 verse 16 says this. For a righteous man may fall seven times and rise again, but the wicked shall fall by calamity. I'm not worried about the bottom part of that verse. I want you to look at the very first part of it. For a righteous man... Okay, for a righteous man, who are we talking to? The world? Okay, we're talking to saved men and women, right? We are talking to God-owned people. So a righteous man, a person that is in right standing, you guys can never make a mistake. Ever. Right? No. Then why do you keep hurting people? If you know the answer to that, why do you intentionally go and destroy people? We cannot keep destroying the church and expect them to come to church by the groves. People are tired of coming in here, hearing us saying, you are a no good sinner, you ain't worth nothing, you're going straight to hell. Oh, well where do I sign the membership card for this place? <laughs> Let me get right in here. I never heard Jesus say that. I've never seen Jesus follow that pattern. Never. And even when he did have to put a little truth out there, it was in such a way that the chick turned out to be one of the craziest evangelists that town had ever seen. Is this the example that we're to follow? What intrigued me was two words in the scripture because I, I want you to remember where this is going for, for, 
from really from the beginning, but I really want you to catch it now. Everything that you'll ever get from God will always be in two parts, physical and spiritual. Physical, spiritual, physical, spiritual. They'll both be in there at the same time, but they have two meanings. That work? (laughs) Are y'all nervous? It's all right, it's gonna be a good one. The two words that, that really stood out and caught me was fall and seven. Two words right beside each other. What in the world did God need me to see about these two words? Here we go. Because I, I, when he showed me this, I knew there had to be something more. Okay, a righteous man can fall seven times. That means that even pastor or pastor's wife or anybody in this front row I'm going to pay for that. Anybody in this church can make a mistake. I got saved. I'm sanctified. I'm filled with the Spirit of God. And I am continually trying to move toward God and live a a life that represents Him the best, not because it's going to make me more righteous, but because of the example that I can set and the, the fruit that I would be able to bear would be more people who want to be saved. Because I can promise you, the world I came out of, you were not going to come up and talk to me like that. Period. I know people think they can. I know people think, no, you got to go out there and, and hit them hard. Show them they're going to hell. I wouldn't have played that game with you for a minute and you sure wasn't going to save me. So that's just, now I'm walking off of my, my thought process. You guys may have loved it and just couldn't get enough of it, but it would not work for me. So I'm looking at this and it says, okay, a person can make a mistake. He's talking about a righteous, a righteous man, a person in right standing with God, a person that has the seal of God on him may fall seven times, and I don't know if you've ever seen this, but in the way this is written in the Hebrew, it's talking about in a day's time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because you're sitting there thinking, okay, back in 89, that's one. 89 February. Oh, Lord. I've used up my seven. I'm on somebody else's seven. (laughs) Times eight. Now, before we get into a debate between Old Testament and New Testament, New Testament says, Jesus, how many times should I forgive somebody that offends me and hurts me? Seven times? Because there's a reason for seven. I'm going to tell you that here in a minute. It says, seven (laughs) times. Here's the other five. I see you counting. Should I, should I forgive them seven times? He says, no, not seven. Maybe times 70. And what did he say? In a day's time. In a day's time. How much forgiveness is that if you count how many people are in this church right now? I'm in forgiveness all day. Day in, I just will not even think about it. Just, oh, forgive you. I forgive you because I'm going to be up late being mad if I stick with it every time. I want you to hear this. The word seven. I want to start with it first. The word seven, of course, everybody knows that there's uh, meaning on uh, numbers in the Bible. I want you to know that when he said seven, when he decided seven, he was saying the word Sheba. Sheba, it's a Hebrew word, Sheba, and it's very masculine. It's not, oh, I forgive you. No, this is a masculine word. I mean, this is standing up in front of everybody. I'm not trying to hide this. This is masculine. And it means that when I stand up and I declare the number seven over this thing, this is a spiritual completion. Because see, a lot of people say, oh, seven is just a, uh, just a number of completion. Well, don't short yourself. 
But why did he use it here? Why would you use that such a masculine word? And you're talking about somebody failing. Now, is it after seven that this is a spiritual completion? But what he wants you to see is this is a journey. That when you fail, let this be a teaching process that begins to teach you where you failed at. And when you get back up, because it says a righteous man will fail seven times and get back up. So when you do fail, don't stay in it. Don't stay there. Don't let it rule and, and make you who you are. Stand up and let that thing be a spiritual completion. And let you learn spiritually and grow spiritually. Let it feed your spirit. Like I said to you guys a little while back, I will never fail. I may have a bad day, but I won't fail. I'll have a learning experience. Failure means you missed the mark, you failed, and you don't have any plans of doing anything about it. That's not me. If I fail at something, you can bet. I, I was trying to learn how to ski. If you're ever going to learn how to ski, one very key thing you need to know is when you fall, close your mouth. <laughs> that was a learning experience for me. I learned it well, and I'm sure it never happened to me again. I can claim the number seven over that as a spiritual completion. And that's what we're supposed to do. It, it represents completion, but the main thing is it's a spiritual meaning. The word itself is uh, the Shabbat, is, uh, it is the sacred full one. <laughs> That's so good. That, the Hebrew language is such a crazy thing. It just brings things out. So if I make a mistake and I have fallen already first thing this morning, uh, somehow I fail, I can get up and say, okay, that, I shouldn't have went that way. I'm going to claim the spiritual completion over this thing. And I'm going to say that that part of my life is now sacredly full. And I don't have to revisit this. Isn't that so good? That's just one word. That's just one word in God's Bible that has so much inside it. Now let's look at the, uh, the fall. Wow. The fall. The Hebrew word for the, for the word fall is nafal. N-A-W-F-A-L. Nafal. In Hebrew it's N-A-P-H-A-L. Listen to all the things it is. Ever since they told me to stay here, it drives me crazy. I feel like I have to walk even more. If they'd have just not said nothing, I probably could have been all right. <laughs> so here's what he's saying that I can have spiritual completion over. This is what he meant when he says, if you fall. So if there's Christians in here that are keeping a list of your brothers or sisters that have made a mistake, here's what's covered under this fall seven times and gets back up. Just a short list. It means that somebody that just ceased, they just stopped. <laughs> you know anybody that used to go to church? They just, I, I'm, I'm so out of here. A person that got to be where they're just divided. I'm divided over home and work and kids. I'm divided over this and that and this and that. It even covers somebody that makes provision and makes himself ready to fall. <laughs> you just gotta love the word. The word's even covering somebody that made provision for themselves to fall. What does the Bible say? The Bible says you've never been tempted with more than you can stand except for those things that you made provision for when you were led away by your own lust. Oh, it's in here. Huh. Ready for me to fall away or fall down? 
Or what if I'm, I feel like I've done so bad? You ever hear somebody, oh, I, I can't go to church, the roof will fall in on me. I can't go to church because you know this and that. Maybe this person is a, a fugitive from church. <laughs> wow. I don't go to church or I don't do this because I feel inferior. There's no way I can be Miss Cleo, so I'm just not even going to try. I can't be Brother George. I can't be Scott or Mark or any of these other people. And even for the one who's doing the judging, you've judged people and you've made comments to them and you've hurt them. That's a Christian who has fallen. Those who have judged. And by judging people, you've made mistakes. Those who just get so wore out and so tired and everything, they just, they just lay down. They just give up. You ever been under so much pressure you just give up? God said, that's all right. I have some spiritual completion for you. And I'm going to help you get back up because that's what a righteous person does. There's coverage here even for the ones who lay down. Those who have lost something. My friend, he's not here today, but uh, my friend Vernon, who has been spending a lot of time talking about when he lost his wife, he said, man, I was in church. Everything was going great. I lost my wife, and I just gave up. I just quit. He said, and the worst thing anybody could ever say to me every time they come up is, how you doing? Well, how do you think I'm doing? (laughs) I'm doing terrible. I'm... Everybody deals with grief a whole lot of different ways, he said. But for me, I was lost. There's provision in here for lying, for people who get so angry and so mad at the church that they want to overthrow the church. They want to overwhelm it. They want to make this thing close down. I won't be happy until I have destroyed this church. For those that have let it get so bad... This word is in here that they just begin to rot. (laughs) Wow. Wow. That's some hurt people. Where did they get so hurt? Where have you got so hurt by Christianity? I should have said religion. Where did you get so hurt by religion that you would rather just sit and let this stuff rot inside you? That you, you would let it rot or that you have thought, man, I, I'm guilty of this one right here early on. Whew. But I get it from David. I thought, you know, if I just kill this person, it'd be better for everybody. You would even slay somebody. You're guilty of even killing somebody, smiting them out, just throwing down with them. All these things he's talking about in those two words. He said, everything in there, everything that you just read, everything that them two words represent is covered for you. Not just your first time, but every time. That is so hard to get a hold of because we want to say, well, what's the sense of me trying to do good? If they can sit over there and continue to do everything they're doing, And they're going to heaven too? Let me tell you something. You're not paying attention to what they're doing over there. Because I've been over there. It only looks fun on the commercials they make about it. They don't show you how the wave come through their home and tore their home apart. They don't show you how the drugs and the alcohol and, and all the dope and all the stuff that has come through and just completely wiped out everything they ever had. Now there's all this divorce running rampant and every child is being affected. They came out with that no, uh, no fault divorce. <laughs> yes, there is. It's somebody's fault. What do you mean no fault divorce? It's somebody's fault because you loved each other sometime. Something had to happen. And then you both quit. Either one quit completely or the other or however it ended up, it was a fault. 
God said, let these two be joined together and let they be one. When we first started doing weddings, we said, this wedding is forever. And then we said, well, you know, let's, let's do the best you can. Now it's, I hope you're still together long enough to pay that dress off. Because it's just so, everything's just like that anymore. You know, nothing is forever. You don't see it that way. It's, you have a whole generation now that's come from all these divorced homes and these single parent homes and, and you got all this going on. And from my generation, we stopped prayer in school. We completely took God out of the public eye, you know, year after year after year, got more and more and more and more. Well, welcome to it. This is decisions that we've made. You wouldn't even dream of getting divorced in Miss Cleo and George's generation. Uh-uh. You stick this thing out. Because in a week or two, when you got this big problem already worked out and everything is fine, then everything goes back. Now, please don't email me later. Well, you don't know what I've been through. Well, I understand. I know there are severe cases and stuff that things just, they have to happen for, you know, safety and life. I come from a broken home. I come from, <laughs> woo, it don't get any crazier. We were poster child for messed up families. So believe me, I do get it. Where am I at? Oh, I'm good. What I'm saying is, is the church has decided to tear you apart when God never told us to tear you apart. So therein you have never experienced true Christianity until you have been so truly loved by a Christian that you see the difference. Yeah. I can tell you right now, Babs has never said a bad word about me. <laughs> Ever. And her husband, Joel. Even if they knew something bad about me, you would never hear Babs and Joe walking around talking bad about the pastor. It wouldn't matter if it's me or anybody else. And their kids. Uh, Lance, he lives in a different place. When he sees me, I don't even know if he knows my name or not, but he's never referred to me by my name. Because they understand church. And they understand that my name is insignificant, it's who I represent. Yes. And I've always been referred to by a pastor, by every one of her kids, without fail. And it's always blown me away. We were out playing golf one day. All you bikers go like this. <laughs> That's right, I play golf. I'm good at it until Lance and his kid shows up, six-year-old kid. <laughs> I wasn't very pastoral that day, but I did better than Nick. I, 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 just, just saying. Moving on. The thought process that I was going with is, is it doesn't matter about the person. It matters about who we represent. And who we represent is Christ the King. Right. And I come in the authority of Christ the King. <clears throat> when I stand in this position or whether I'm home, the calling never leaves me. It never changes me. Right. So therefore, there's a reason why I should always be trying to act better and live better and do better. Though I have all the forgiveness I will ever be able to handle. My love for the king makes me want to be better. Not because I am bound by a law to do it, but because I love him that much. I love Christ that much. I want to be him. I want to serve him. And I know that there was a time that I felt like I had lost the spirit of God off my life. And it was terrible. It's probably the worst time I ever experienced in my life. And I never want to experience that again. But God says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. It was my broken fellowship with him. 
He never took his spirit from me. I misplaced it. I didn't seek it out. I didn't try to find it. I didn't try to walk in it. Look at this. And this is what I'm trying to get you to. Uh, Psalms 12, verse 6. Look at this. The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver tried in a furnace of earth, purified, what? So spiritually completed. <laughs> wow. Who's earth? You. You're the earth. He's not trying to get the dirt to be spiritually complete, though it is. The words of the Lord are pure words. Like silver tried in a furnace of earth. It's tried inside you. And every time you accomplish it, every time you believe it, every time your faith works. Remember what we said the other day? That we have faith for the past. Oh, Jesus, I believe. I believe in you. I know you was born of a virgin, which is a stretch for most of us. Oh, not y'all. It's a listening audience on live stream. But I, I believe you were born of a virgin. I believe you walked this earth. I believe you died. And on the third day, you rose again. I believe all that. I believe all the miracles. I believe everything Jesus. And I believe in the sweet by and by. When I cross over that valley, I ain't got long to stay here. I got faith for that, boy. I, I can see it, Lord. I can see the clouds opening up and receiving my soul. But I got this backache right now. <laughs> it's all right. I won't push it. Yeah, I will. How can we... How can we lay claim to all that? And you're betting your eternity on all this, but we can't get through right now. We need right now, right now. That's why this whole book was written. If all we were talking about was eternity, then that'd be a whole lot shorter book. Just believe it, prayer, prayer, salvation. I'll see you in uh, however many years you got. Some few years, some medium years, some hundred and something years. But I will see you then. Close the book, done deal. But since we don't leave right then, my pastor used to tell me, I wish that the moment you got saved, you turned blue. It'd be so much easier for all those who lie. Are you a Christian? No, because you couldn't lie about it. And we would know. But that's what Jesus said. It's supposed to be about the same. It's supposed to be at such an example that he said, they'll know your mind by the way you love her. They'll know your mind when you can walk into a church with a sleeved out tattooed biker pastor and you don't see that before you love him and you don't even see all that. All you see is the love of Christ that has completely changed my, my whole life. That's right. I used to get so embarrassed when people would walk up and say, hey, I want you to meet my pastor. It was hardly ever when I'm up here in suit and tie. Long sleeves. No, it's a work day at church. I've been up here. I got shorts on. I got a sleeveless T-shirt on. Happened just yesterday at the yard sale. Oh yeah, this is uh, this is the pastor of the church, lady. <laughs> <laughs> this is what you get. I do. <laughs> here it is, wide open. But I mean, you just, it's just what it is. I wear my sin on the outside of my body. You know, I, I didn't get, 
I, I can't say that I didn't get tattooed after I got saved in, in church and pastoring, because believe me when I say I had a lot I needed to cover. <laughs> I had a whole way of different thinking when I first started getting tattooed. <laughs> And I had to get a bunch of them changed and clothes put on them. And... <laughs> Just say it. The words of the Lord are pure words, like silver, tried in a furnace of the earth. All his words are being tried in you. And when I said the other day that we probably ought to be trying to live different here, I'm not trying to entangle you back into slavery. I'm just telling you, people are watching you. People are watching you and they're gonna judge Christ by how they see you. It's got nothing to do with the 10 commandments. It's got nothing to do with the, the law from the Old Testament. I'm saying they are watching you and judging him. Okay? Well, I mean, it would be tough to choose what some of them choose it for. I like somebody who is like a Satanist. Because by God, they're not playing around. I know. And they're right up front with it. If you see somebody walking up towards you who's got like a black cape on, a great big pentagram necklace on here, you don't have to guess. They're probably not Christian. All right. If they get back, come on out of the Walmart and let them come go on. But just, you know who they are. And they're right out front with their beliefs. They'll tell you right now. I don't serve your God. But don't you wonder where they started? Don't you want to know what had to get so messed up? that they had to go that way? I wonder. I wonder how I got so messed up. I used to make fun of church people, make fun of them left and right. This guy tried to witness to us one night. We was riding around in the back of the truck, and that was the funniest thing to us because we were stupid, high, and drunk. We was riding around in the back of the truck making fun of them. Have you heard the word? God, I'd give anything to meet that guy again. Because he knew enough to bother us. You know, he kind of make fun of what you don't understand. But I still remember him today. I bet I've walked by a whole lot of Christians. I tried it one day. I took my patch off and was downtown at a big Christian function in Columbia. I just walked around, and you know nobody cared enough about me to witness to me. That's why I want this church full of freaks. Amen. Let's go just, let's just go get them all. I like witnessing, I like the bike blessing. We got a friend from Topeka and his wife today visiting. They were coming to the bike blessing this year. They live in Topeka, Kansas. <laughs> Hallelujah. Got Jesus all over his back. I'm glad they come to visit today. But that's why we do it. I want to witness to every one of them. If you are all nasty, sleeved out, tattoos everywhere, and your woman has got shorts that barely made a belt, <laughs> tube top or whatever, I want to witness to you. My wife will witness to your old lady, but, but we're coming to you. I want to see that guy that's drunk sitting on the side of the road on the curb. I want to let him know God loves him more than this. Mm, mm, mm. Because God's word is pure. We ain't. <laughs> We're not pure. We are righteous. We are righteous, but we are not pure yet. We got hang-ups. When I get up out of bed and I kick that stupid dog's bone, purity leaves the window. Because <laughs> that thing is jagged all the way around the edge of it. And it 
all the time. That good old Christian dog of my wife. <laughs> we'll turn the light on before you get up. Well, that would help. But I'm not pure. I am righteous. And I will fall seven times right in front of your face. I will make a mistake yesterday. And I'm going to close with this. Yesterday, I was leaving here. Man, I felt good about everything. So many people showed up. And my wife worked so hard. And Joel and Babs was out here. And just, I mean, just, it just went so good. And I, I was going home. I'm tired. And uh, you guys know I've, I've been way open about this, about road rage. I've been doing so good. But a righteous man will fall seven times. In a day. <laughs> in a day. I did so good. I was going home. I drive all day, every day. So I know that when I come up to a stoplight and I'm going to turn left and I have the light, that even though a car coming this way with his turn signal on, I have the right of way. So I exercised my right to go. I didn't cut this lady off. She really had plenty of time. But she wasn't going to merge. She was not going to yield. But I went on like that, and she got on that horn <laughs> in her little key of soul. I should have hit the brakes on that big old Ford pickup. <laughs> Let her come to Jesus' party. <laughs> but I just kept on going. I'm trying to ignore her. And see, I can barely see the top of this little keel sole through the rear view mirror. I thought, I can feel my Holy Spirit going. <laughs> then she came around and did the cardinal sin. I thought, man, she don't even know <laughs> that maybe 20 years ago, this would end up different. Yeah. <laughs> and how does she know I'm saved, righteous, <laughs> even though I'm sitting there going... <laughs> Keep your hands on the wheel. Keep your hands on the wheel. Keep your hands on the wheel. Pray. <laughs> and she comes around and she dips up in front of me. And what do you think she does? That's what I want to do. I love Jesus. I backed off. <laughs> God, this doesn't feel good. You said this would feel good. It doesn't yet. And we did that for a little bit. And I followed her, and she finally got to this place. I, I was wrong. <laughs> but I kind of followed her a little bit off of the ramp, like I was going to follow her. And I said, ah, like that. I was going to go on, and she did it again. So I called my wife and let her talk me down for a little bit. <laughs> Because I don't want it to interrupt me and I don't want it to stop up my blessings and there's a lot of stuff I need to do. And here, as God is my witness, this is the thought that went through my head. What if she ever comes to church? <laughs> Guess what that sermon will be on. <laughs> but I, I, didn't want, I didn't want my character flaw I didn't want my character flaw to be a problem on my end if she ever came to visit here. I want her to know that I didn't flip her off. I didn't do anything with my breaks to her. And when she went on, I went on and that was the end of it. I got to take control over me. And when we do that, if I ever get the opportunity to show her love, I want to be able to do it. 
That's the long and short of it. Do I forgive her? Yes, I do today. And later on, about an hour later, I did. And I would have to do it 70 times that day if she followed me home or whatever. I, would, I have to do it all the time as the pastor of this church. I have to do it as a husband, as a father, as a brother, as, you know, in whatever facet of life you're walking in. You better get ready. You better start getting used to it. You better start getting those forgiveness shoes on because you got to walk in them. You got to walk in them. Marriages won't fail if you do two things. You continue to walk in love and you continue to walk in forgiveness. Because it's hard to do all the bad stuff to somebody if you do that. I love you, you crazy hag. No. That's not walking in love or wisdom. What's all the women look at like? I didn't say it. I did, but I mean, I <laughs> love and forgiveness. Love and forgiveness. It, it'll, it'll be there. Teach your kids right away. Love and forgiveness because God's word is pure and true. Amen. Amen. I so appreciate you coming today. I don't take for granted any time anyone walks in that door. I love every one of you and I love to, to pastor. I love to be here with you. And I love to see the lights start to come on as we're getting stronger and as we're getting more and more of the word of God that becomes so clear. Listen, don't waste a lot of time looking for this super deep revelation because we haven't got love yet. Let's, let's keep working on love and we'll worry about the book of Revelation and we'll, we'll worry about the deeper things of God. But when God himself said, I have so much more I want to share with you. I have so much more I want to teach you, but you're not ready for it yet. You can't move on to the deeper things if we're having trouble loving each other. We need to stay with loving each other first and, and go with that. So stick with us. You know, sometimes you hear people say, oh, I, I got to go somewhere where it's deeper. Well, the Bible also says you'll know them by their fruit. <laughs> so there you go. There's your little self-check that you can always check with. Every time I feel a little, little bigger, oh, man, God, I got this. I got this. That would be the worst day ever. I will fail so bad, it's not even funny. Father, I thank you for today. I thank you for your word. I thank you, God, that you will take time with us and just open one word and just open it up to us. And I thank you, God, that today we've been fed both physically and spiritually. And God, I pray that this word will take root and that it goes back to Kansas and it goes live over the internet and it goes everywhere all over the world. That your word is pure and that your word is true. And the more we count on it, the more it gets refined in us, the better people that we become because we become Christ-like. God, I'm praying for Christians. I'm praying for disciples. I'm praying for the lost. God, put somebody in our path that we can share the love of Christ in. Let us be a tool in the master's hand, not just today, but every day. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Be blessed as you go. Give the Lord a praise.